Praise the Lord and God bless you again today. Beautiful day, this Triumph Tuesday. This is Midday Manor. And during this month of February, we are continuing to talk about the love, the love between a man and a woman by going through the Song of Solomon. This week, or today, we are on chapter number four, chapter number four, right after this. Praise the Lord and God bless you. It truly is a uh, blessing to be here and to have you with us again on our 10-minute midday manna. We thank God for you joining us. Just 10 minutes uh, that we come to you uh, to go through the Word of God during your lunch hour. And so we pray in that we are uh, a blessing to you and that the Word of God uh, blesses you on today. Amen. All right. So when we look at the scripture today, we are in chapter four of Solomon's song, Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs. Um, we've been dealing with uh, the first three chapters and want to uh, continue on. If you know, we are um, chapter three was talking about the marriage, uh, the wedding ceremony. Uh, and so chapter four is going to get into after the wedding. Um, and so let's uh, let's look at the word of God. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. <clears throat> thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which come up from the washing, whereof every one bear twins, and none is barren among them. Thy lips are like the thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate, Within thy locks. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, built for an armory, whereupon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins, which feed amongst the lilies. <clears throat> Until the daybreak and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse, how much... Better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, camphire with spikenard. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all chief spices, a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come thou uh, south, blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat uh, his pleasant fruits. <clears throat> Amen. So we look at this chapter. We're dealing with the consummation of the marriage. We're dealing with the intimacy, the sexual intimacy that is uh, about to take place uh, between uh, the bride and groom, the king, King Solomon, and uh, the bride. And so when we look at it, we look at it starting off, um, whereas in the last chapters, oh, we probably saw more of the bride speaking or the soon to be bride speaking uh in this chapter we are dealing with the man uh it's something how it trans over transitions over from uh the pre-wedding and her uh thinking of and imagining it uh yearning for it and then the post-wedding of his response to finally uh approaching his bride the build-up the anticipation uh, you can imagine their feelings toward this moment. Uh, anybody who's been married and haven't done through this understand 
the build up, the planning, the, all this stuff, but just between the two, uh, the uh, anticipation and things. But even though it was highly anticipated, it was longed for, it was something that was on their minds, uh, it still wasn't rushed. It still wasn't uh, um, shallow. Uh, he starts off by even uh, complimenting and, and affirming his desire toward her, not of a sexual nature, but of her beauty. He talks about how fair she is. She is. He talks about uh, her hair, her teeth, uh, all of them having twins, meaning that they were her teeth were perfect. There was uh, nothing barren among them. Didn't have, she didn't have no teeth <laughs> missing. Uh, he was just talking about her hairs, the goats. Uh, and a lot of these references we won't immediately um, relate to. I don't relate to how a woman is beautiful as goats. But if you read, you kind of get an understanding if, uh, from some people that are more in-depth and they're looking and how goats look uh, on the mountains moving and things of that nature was pleasant. Uh, beauty you can imagine how uh, a herd or a flock looks but then you put goats and goats sometimes have good hair and, and all of that stuff and how it could all uh, blend together <clears throat> um, the sheep that are that are shorn uh, you, you've seen pictures of sheep that have tarnished their 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 wool is dirty and and sometimes it's knotted up and things of that nature but after shorn all of the sheep look the same because it gets back to the root and so uh, you look at that her neck he talks about uh, uh, like the Tower of David uh, something that would be uh, uh, firm strong not long and, and tall uh, but firm strong that's why he uses strong armory shield buckler um, two breasts he talks about and somebody said well, you're, you know people get a uh, but he he this is something that was said and I ain't gonna say Shakespearean, but in poetic form that these things are. I got to move on, but he's talking to her, talking about uh, young rose, tender, and, and things of that nature. Uh, he says, "I will get to the mountains, and uh, I'm gonna get to the hill of frankincense." He's talking about, "I'm yearning to uh, to have you." No offense taken, no offense there, but it was part of a part to have a man desire you so much especially if you remember how she thought of herself in chapter number one he reaffirming that constantly and that's the thing and i'm gonna run out of time i'm out to rush but that's the thing that that you see um in that we as men must realize it's not about the event but as uh, the bible talks about as unto the weaker vessel it doesn't mean they're weak it doesn't mean that women are weak but you should have a mindset to constantly refer and tell them you love them tell them how beautiful they look try to recognize something uh the hair they you know as african americans we uh they get hair appointments weekly bi-weekly and so they do are able to do a lot of different things and i grew up with a bunch of hairdressers so i've seen everything from uh <laughs> doogie braids to camel hunts to uh to crinkles and sprinkles and spritz and sheen and all that stuff and so you know it's just something that's a joke me and my wife have of, of just talking about her different hairdos that she will she would do um but recognizing those things recognizing when she does things talk about how she looks her her figure her beauty her skin her teeth her eyes her, you know and that's what he did but um it goes on and i got a minute left but um he tells in verse eight come with me you know that's that's the thing come with me i want you with me i want you for the rest of my life we say for better word for richard poor i want you i don't care what happens i don't care what i feel i'm upset with i don't care all of these things i want you with me come with me from lebanon come from the north come with me uh my spouse um uh you have ravaged my heart he's telling you you are fair he's constantly telling her and uplifting her uh, real quickly, I saw a documentary the time. They let the husband uh, do a character sketch, kind of like a criminal, but do a character sketch of his wife. Let the wife do a character sketch of herself. And the and the woman's character sketch was really it was uglier than what she really looked like. But the man's was spot on or even better. It was just so beautiful. 
And a lot of times women, they said, don't see themselves as beautiful as they are. Whereas the husband sees them as almost supermodel qualities and stuff. And so that's why for a husband, and, and, and you see it with fathers should reaffirm their daughters, but and husbands should reaffirm their wives and their beauty to their comeliness. And so he goes on with that. And I'm going to end it, but he talks about the garden, uh, which is her sexuality, which is uh, not a body part, but the sexuality. Uh, it was closed. But then he says, I got, I'm going to hold to my 10 minutes. He says, um, I'm going into my garden, your garden. Then in verse 16, it's my garden. Um, uh, to get the spices, to get the pleasant fruits that transition from it being a closed up virginity, closed up garden to now being his garden. And uh, we can go deeper in that, but I think it continues on in chapter five. We can talk about it more. A little bit older today. Hope I'm still in 11, but God bless you. Have a smile upon you. We'll be back here on Thursday. Join us then uh, for our next midday manner. And we'll look at chapter five and talk more about my garden. All right. God bless you in Jesus name.